Hey YouTubers and welcome back to my YouTube channel Master That English where we understand analyze and interpret the important texts and concepts that may be part of your English curriculum Our topic for today is a small section of the pamphlet written by John Milton of the Puritan Age So get your pens and notepads ready cuz here we go In England During the Puritan age there was a social unrest between the Presbyterian government and King Charles I Due to this tense atmosphere the form of writing that became popular among the masses was a pamphlet Now the question is what is a pamphlet Pamphlet are small unbound books that throw light on the social political and religious issues faced by the society in the 15th and 16th century england these were generally voices of complaint against the church and the ruler as they criticized the injustices and atrocities committed on the common man so to keep a check on such activities the puritan age enforced strict laws to control the new beliefs of the society One such action was the Licensing Act passed in the year 1643. This Licensing Act curbed the freedom of expression of the common man. In response, many writers protested against this injustice and wrote polemical works as response. Polemical works are those works that are related to argument or controversy. One such polemical work was written by John Milton who responded against the Licensing Act of 1643 through his work Areopagitica. Now, why did Milton write against the Licensing Act? There are two reasons. One is political reason and the other is personal. The political reason was that Milton realized that the Presbyterian government was misusing its power for religious supremacy for he believed that such power control will harm the growth and progress of the nation and the personal reason was that his divorce tracts were banned these comprised of works such as the doctrine and discipline of divorce the judgment of martin bucer tetrachordon and cholesterol Milton was inspired to write these works due to the problems he faced in his marriage life to his first wife where due to incompatibility they had differences Milton was agitated by this unjust ban and retaliated by writing a pamphlet in response hence the aim of the pamphlet that was written by Milton was to emphasize the importance of ideas represented in books hence the work was titled areopagitica a speech by john milton for the liberty of unlicensed printing to the parliament of england now what is the significance of the title areopagitica the title has been taken from the speech of the greek orator isocrates what is ironic is that where isocrates supports control by the authority if you want to reform athens you need to control the private lives of the citizens by observing them minutely in contrast milton is against the idea of control by the authorities we need liberty for reformation don't control or expression let's move on to our next question which would be a recap question so who in the essay thinks that books are malefactors well if you have followed the lecture so far you can make out this answer it is the presbyterian government that feels that books with revolutionary ideas have a negative impact on society that brings us to our next question How does Milton justify his support of books? 
He provides the significance of books by comparing books with other objects. And he defends his argument with biblical and mythological references. Now our next question is, why has Milton personified books in his work? Because books like human beings are capable of uplifting and influencing the society towards advancement. Now, in what context does Milton make a reference to the vial? A vial is a small cylindrical glass capsule that contains medicine. So just as the vial contains the purest form of medication, similarly, books also convey the purest of thoughts by the writer. Now, in what context does Milton give a reference to the dragon's teeth? The reference of the dragon's teeth has been taken from the Greek mythological story. So let me give you a brief outline of the story. According to the legend, it is believed that a warrior named Cadmus was on his way to create the city of Thebes. La 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 la! When suddenly, <gasps> he met a dragon on the way. Cadmus killed the dragon and took out the dragon's teeth. Now, on the advice of a goddess who said, Sow these seeds in the earth, Cadmus. Cadmus did as he was told. And behold, from the teeth sprang out brave warriors. So, here dragon's teeth is compared to the productive nature of books. So just as dragon's teeth generated multiple soldiers, similarly, books are capable of producing multiple thoughts. So why have books been described as the lifeblood of master spirit? Because books are God's gift to mankind because of the ideas and thoughts present in them. These ideas and thoughts are the precious lifeblood of the master spirit. Man has the potential of creating ideas through books. That is the reason why Milton calls books immortal, because they are embalmed as they preserve the ideas of the Creator, thus immortalizing him for generations to come. On the other hand, some men do nothing worthwhile in life and end up a burden on earth. Books have a purpose beyond the life of man who has created them. In what context does Milton use the term rejected truth? Milton uses the term rejected truth with reference to those men who did not get their due for their revolutionary ideas during their lifetime. One such famous example was Milton's contemporary Galileo, the Italian astronomer also called the father of modern science, whose revolutionary ideas got him into a lot of trouble with the church. This is the reason why Milton says that books are the living labors of the public men. This means that books are the hard work of the public men, as their ideas continue to live even after they have gone. So why does Milton say that we need to be careful while punishing or criticizing the labor of public men? Because when we kill a book by destroying it, we are causing injustice to the creator of the book. And this can be done at three levels. These include homicide, martyrdom and massacre. The first is homicide or killing of the humans. This can be done through character assassination. One can practice this by hurting the sentiments of the writer or criticizing the content of the work. The second is martyrdom. This can happen when you take legal actions against the writers. 
and by taking legal actions, you are stopping the promotion or publication of the work, thereby punishing the creator for his creativity and killing his creative instinct. The last is massacre. When you question the logic of the idea present in the book, this is the point when you destroy the idea by questioning the logic. So you ask questions like, how can you write something like this? This is so immoral. Milton had been through this injustice when his work on divorce was banned. And that is the reason why Milton is suggesting that works with revolutionary ideas should not be banned. That brings us to our last question now, which is, why does Milton refer to the books as the fifth essence? In order to understand that, let us first have a look at the four important essences. The first is air, then water, fire and earth. Milton has referred books as the fifth essence because they are magical, mystical and full of wonder. And so, when we destroy a book, we are destroying something that is immortal, as books are preserved for generations till eternity. So we are not killing the person who has created the book, but destroying the logic and reason in the book, which would have guided the mankind for generations. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Milton's defense stands strong even today as any restrictions on the writer is definitely curbing his right of expression. Do share, like and subscribe to the channel if you feel the lecture was enriching. Till we meet next time with a new lecture, this is me Karishma. Take care.